now available on Instagram. Welcome to my channel. Today's video, as you might have seen by the title, is all about Christopher Kane. I truly believe there's no one like him when it comes to challenging the viewer's perception of what is truly beautiful. He is constantly taking forgotten and some might even say unattractive relics of the past and reinventing them into something that I suddenly can't live without. And this idea is at the core of the brand's philosophy. In the label's own bio it states, Christopher Kane is the London label challenging fashion ideologies and notions of beauty since 2006. The ordinary is transformed into the extraordinary when collections that start with autobiographical and inspirations are realized using innovative techniques. And yes, manipulating fabrics and textures as well as challenging notions of what is beautiful are what has earned him the nickname Fashion's Willy Wonka. So this video is my ode to Christopher Kane. I have so many favorite moments and collections and Christopher Kane has been a brand for 15 years that it would definitely be too long to speak about everything. So I thought I would focus on some of my favorite things from the first 10 years of the brand. Okay, let's just get started with a little bit of a history of Christopher Kane. Christopher Kane is actually a really young guy. He was born in 1982 and he's only 38 years old, which would make him only 22 when he started his own label. He was born and he grew up in Scotland. Then in 2000, he moved to London to study fashion design at Central St. Martins. And that's where he received a bachelor's degree as well as a master's degree in fashion design. While he was still at school, he entered a contest and he won the Lancome Color Award. And that actually got him noticed by Donna Natalia Versace and she kind of became his mentor of sorts. He graduated in 2006 and started working as a consultant for Versace but turned down the full-time job offer in order to focus on his own label. Versace later appointed Kane to be creative director of Versace's diffusion line Versus in 2009. So Kane established his namesake label in 2006 with his sister Tammy Kane. Her position in the company is co-creative director and co-founder. It was an independent label from its creation in 2006 until 2013, when 51% of the label was purchased by Caring, who now owns majority stake in the company. So in this video, I want to highlight some of my favorite moments for the first 10 years of the brand. Starting with the season that I first noticed Christopher Kane. So for the spring 2007 show, he sent down the runway 50 short bandage dresses in all kinds of variations with these fluorescent colors, but also in these beautiful color combinations with exposed zippers and frilly lace. The belts were my favorite part, reminding me of my school backpack with plastic buckles. It was basically the same dress in different variations and color combinations going down the right way, but it actually felt so fresh and so new. That collection was really seen as Alaya and Versace on acid for a new generation. This collection to me was so special because it really set the stage. It walks a fine line between trashy and chic. I think that's part of his genius that he can do that so well. Then we have spring 2009, which is definitely always in my memories when I think of Christopher Kane. This season was actually inspired by kind of a hodgepodge of things, including Planet of the Apes, The Flintstones, Raquel Welch in One Million Years BC, and then Diane Fossey and her gorillas, as well as Kane's love for dinosaurs as a little boy. And what emerged was leather organza and laser cut half circle 3D geometric scalloping of all the organza and leather. Those 3D shapes just really gave new life to the garments. And I definitely got the message of the Flintstones and dinosaurs through it as well. The Vogue review stated that the marabou feathers were a special borderline tacky touch that always put the finishing stamp on a Christopher Kane collection. Kane's gorilla was followed in 2010 by Givenchy's dog that became very very popular as well and kind of a very iconic thing for Givenchy but it was really Christopher Kane's gorilla that really started that trend. It was also for me the first time I saw really hyper real prints printed on a garment that was a pretty dress and high fashion. It kind of totally blew my mind
mind and I loved it and I know everyone else loved it too and it became a huge trend. It was just the mumbo jumbo of amazingness and to me this is like a holy grail collection that if I ever came across one of those ape dresses even if it was like a size negative zero I would still purchase it just to have because I think it's so special. Okay moving on to one of my other favorites is Resort 2010 and this whole collection is really playing up on that whole thing of hyper real photos. Kane stated I wanted something natural but I was so fed up with florals and then I came across these images of nuclear test explosions from the 50s to the 70s on the internet. I like the crazy bright chemical colors the way they're sinister but beautiful. All the dresses were very clean streamlined and really the prints were the star. I love the play between very edgy prints and very feminine and beautiful silhouettes. Then moving on to spring 2011 which is to quote Kane himself Princess Margaret on acid. This collection was all about these proper ladylike suits in lace but all of the lace was actually perforated leather with vinyl coating to make kind of a pleather-esque effect. So he's actually using a very expensive fabric such as leather and putting vinyl coating on it to make it look like pleather. My favorite was probably the traditional argyle sweaters draped over neon pleather suits and all the proper lace dresses, but in neon lace. Another inspiration for this collection is also the Yakuza, which is the Japanese gang. And he printed their tattoos on these very proper ladylike silhouettes as well. I think the most sarcastic look was the Yakuza tattoos in a twin set. Definitely Princess Margaret approved. Moving on to fall 2011, where Kane starts exploring crochet. Crochet really makes me think of like a grandma's house or Roseanne's couch from the sitcom. Christopher Kane's crochet was shown in somber shades in sexy revealing silhouettes that were juxtaposed with this plastic trim that was filled with a glitter liquid. Kane stated that he wanted to find a textile that was never used before and he remembered those pencil cases that were filled with glitter when he was a kid and that's where the idea for this trim came from. The fluid itself was actually a mix of vegetable oil and glycerin. He's definitely continued to use this material most notably in fall 2019. Up next is spring 2013 and this collection once again was full of these very ladylike almost deputant dresses but everything was made of very unusual materials especially some of the looks that look like they were held together with electric tape. My favorites were the very pale pale pink organza dresses with crystal and lace that were held down with black tape. The notion of the lady is twisted upside down. All the crystals and the fanciness is just held up by tape. I love the sarcasm and the humor of this whole collection. Okay moving on to Resort 2014 which is another very very memorable favorite of mine. In this season Kane actually starts exploring with Swiss lace and creating his own patterns in Swiss lace. In Kane's case he uses a naked woman's body as well as flowers but done in a very non-traditional lace way. This way of using lace was so interesting and everything just really looked like fine pieces of art. The last dress of the lookbook was actually worn by Kate Blanchett. I actually do think that Kate Blanchett is a Christopher King fan because I've seen her wear the brand numerous times. Then in spring 2014 he actually continued to experiment with Swiss lace. To me this is such a memorable season. So this season was actually kind of a mix of a few ideas. Kane's interest in science mixed with sexuality. He stated we live because of flowers and trees. They produce oxygen but we take them for granted. So that effort to readdress that situation involved an emphasis on flowers reproductive capabilities and their inevitable correlation with women therefore the connection between flowers and the anatomy of women. The collection was actually not romantic it's very clinical there's a medical look at flowers. There were all these shapes that were cut out that represent flower petals. Some of my favorite garments were actually also made of this felted wool that had metallics running through it. That fabric was so interesting and inventive and I also love the laser cutouts of the anatomy of the flowers. I love that the whole theme of women and flowers was not done in a very romantic way. It was done in a more clinical scientific way and I think that's what made it cool and sarcastic. Let's do fall 2015 and this season was really exploring sexuality even further. The show notes mention the phrase 
electric orgasm. There's high necks, long sleeves, sensible skirts. Then there's definitely suggestive sheerness of cutouts. There were naked women's bodies on skirts and dresses in proper church-like silhouettes with opera gloves. The very last looks were made of Swiss lace. They were not pieces, they were whole panels. This time around, the lace was made into patterns of naked bodies intertwining within each other. FKA Twigs actually wore it to the Met Gala in 2015. There's even a penis made of lace in the dress. So once again, Christopher Kane is mixing the ladylike lace, but this time it's in nudes that are possibly having an orgy. When you look at Christopher Kane's career, there are definite themes in his work. Interests of his youth, such as science and sci-fi. Nostalgia of being a kid growing up in Scotland in the 80s and the 90s, as well as sexuality. He's constantly twisting the notion of what a lady is. He's playing around with the idea of what a lady is is a very Christopher Kane thing. And I think it's a very Jasmina thing. And that is probably why I made this video today because it hits home. So I hope you enjoy this video and if you did hit subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye!